Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to be having a look at a radio that has been around for probably 10 years. This is the FlySky FSI6X. I have reviewed the FSI6 about 8 years ago, uh, but this that was a 6 channel radio, this is a uh, 10 channel radio. It is still one of the cheapest and uh, reasonable, programmable, decent quality radios around uh, to date. I get asked lots and lots of questions about this radio. The, the, videos, uh, the videos I do on this radio are among some of the most popular on my channel. I think the fourth most popular uh, video with about 350,000 views is the initial review of the FSI6. Uh, and I gave that radio away to a friend, and, and I regret it ever since because I get so many questions about um, programming and setting up these radios that I thought, okay, it's time to get another one. Banggood very kindly offered to send me one uh, for the review. Um, so what I'm going to do is not actually a review, but I'm going to uh, set it up as a, a fully functional iNav radio. I have my... Adam RC Penguin there, I have a Speedy B F405 wing board in there uh, with Caddx um, FPV and it's all going to be controlled by the FSI6X. There is one mod I've made, to, it has three two position switches and one three position switch and I, I wanted two three position switches so uh, what is it F SWB I think it is, I swapped that out from a two position to a three position and that gives me all the modes and functions that I need. Okay, we're all satellited up and ready to go. I have the 10 channel receiver that comes with the radio. That's pretty impressive, having a 10 channel receiver. Uh, that's the FSI A10B, and I have it, have it set to output S bus. It can output S bus or I bus, but uh, S bus is a bit better for INAV. So we are now ready to go. All right, we're up and flying, and that is in angle mode. Beautiful day out here, just perfect. And well, it just feels like any other radio at the moment. The gimbals, of course, are very cheap. They don't feel like the nice wall effect gimbals. They're a bit raspy, but really, uh, doesn't make a hell of a lot of difference, I don't think. So with all my switches, I have the arm switch on SWA and I have uh, angle manual on SWB, then I have cruise on SC and loiter, all working very nicely. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good idea to add that other three position switch, I think, just makes the INAV set up work really well. The radio does have a couple of variable resistors as well. You could use them for other modes. You could use them for putting it into um, mission mode or something like that. Or for a, a panning and tilting FPV camera. Everything you need in a, a cheap but uh, very capable radio. I haven't got my RSSI up there. I've, I've got that set up for ELRS with other systems and I've swapped this to SBUS. I could have the SBUS um, RSSI up there I guess. Look at that beautiful water out there. Just lovely. Perfect day. Perfect autumn day in Australia. to Acro. Changing the switch was easy, I just opened up the back and uh, pulled the switch out. It's all um, connectorized so you can just unplug it from the main board. Uh, and then I had another switch off an old Tyrannus and I just clipped the wires and soldered the three wires. 
to the right connector and plugged it back in you have to make it sure it's up the right way and good to go nothing else to do you can switch the radio from mode 1 to mode 2 if you need to uh, this is in mode 2 four AA batteries I have seen videos where people have loaded um, OpenTX onto onto this radio it's a bit a uh, bit more involved than I want to do it still has 20 model slots which you can run out of pretty quickly when you get a few few planes uh, I think it only has three mixes I'll have to check that again there's three on the page I didn't try and um, scroll down a bit more I'll, con I'll uh, confirm that when we get back I'll show you all the uh, INAV setup uh, when using this radio, how to change it to S bus as well or I bus from P PWM uh, when we get back back on the bench. But anyway, yeah, this is working perfectly well as a, a very capable INAV radio. Very nice indeed. What a beautiful flying experience this is. All right, we'll bring him into land. This is an agile little plane. <laughs> Wonderful. Almost a bit too agile, I think. And we're down. Very good. So this little radio has pretty impressive range for such a, a simple and cheap little radio. Uh, I've seen iForce 2D do a test out to five kilometers I think but yeah beyond a kilometer easily. It's a pretty sort of rock solid protocol the AFHDS 2A. It can also run the AFHDS receivers which is which are the, a bit cheaper and simpler and don't have sort of the telemetry coming back to the radio. You do get receiver battery telemetry uh, and error messages and things like that so yeah nice very nice trainer port there and it is supplied with the trainer cable there's the switches A is 2 I switched B for 3 C is already 3 and D is 2 and the two variable resistors there the inputs can be a little bit quirky you've got up and down there and uh, enter and cancel to save things whenever you change something on the screen you have to push and hold cancel to hold it that's that's a quirk that um, fools a lot of people you can uh, say enter a, a new name for a, the, the model which is quite um, tedious having to step through the alphabet from end to end uh, and then if you just hit return you'll lose all of that you have to push cancel and hold it until it saves and some of the up and downs are reversed for some reason. You just have to get used to it. It uh, doesn't take much, but yeah, it's just a little bit different to other radios. Has two antennas, one vertical and one horizontal in the handle there, so good coverage no matter what orientation. Four trim switches, and that is about it. All right, let's go back and have a look how to set it up as an INAV radio. All right, let's have a closer look at the FSI6 X radio. Uh, there's the radio, there's the cable it comes with. That's uh, actually a, a firmware update cable, I think, not a not a trainer cable. That's a USB-A into the back there. That's interesting. Uh, we do get a bind plug as well. There's the FSI A10B 10 channel PWM receiver, which also does IBUS and S bus. I'll show you how to set up S bus. And here are the switches. No, this is the switch that I changed for a three position switch. Easy to do, as I said. And we'll go in closer and have a look at the screen. And it does have a rather short backlight time, which you can't change, unfortunately. It's a bit hard to see with the, the uh, colourful stickers there, but that's the OK switch. You push and hold the OK switch, and that brings up the system and the setup. And... Let's have a look at the setup model select. Uh, we can go through 20 different model slots, and this is my uh, INAV model. model. Model name, model type, airplane glider, 
and lots of different helicopter options. Copy reset and receiver setup. And you can change from AFHDS to AFHDS 2A and set up alarms for your receiver battery. Fail safe. You can do a custom fail safe, but if you're on SBUS, I think it automatically sends uh, fail, safe, fail safe flags, or it seems to work properly in INAV anyway. And you can uh, connect sensors to the, to the AFHDS through IBUS as well, which is all very good. Output mode. And here we can choose whether we're doing PWM or PPM or IBUS and SBUS. And I've chosen SBUS there. So the serial output is SBUS. And uh, there's a, a, a couple of IBUS ports. And the one called Servo is the one that you connect to for IBUS or SBUS. So we'll go over to Function Setup. You can reverse channels. Uh, play with your endpoints. And this is important for... Uh, connecting to INAV, uh, I saw that the channels were going weren't quite going down to 1,000 at the lower end, which you do need to for um, detecting when the throttle is all the way down. Some people are having problems getting INAV to work with FlySky, and it could be because uh, the output range for each channel seems to go from. So I found that I, need, I needed to change the inputs to the lower end point to 106 and the higher end point to 98 percent uh, to get it to go to get the channels to go from 1000 to 2000 on INAV and the problem with that is that if channel 3 the throttle channel doesn't go all the way down to a thousand it will prevent your arming and the same with channels 1 and 2 add on an elevator if they aren't if they don't have a midpoint of 1500 um, then it may give you an error message saying roll and pitch not centered and it does seem to sit at 1520 so so I have adjusted the endpoints and put a bit added a bit of trim to uh, to give it a midpoint of 1500 and endpoints of 1000 and 2000 auxiliary channels uh, so we have channels 5 and channel 6 and channel 7 and channel 8 and you you have to tell it which, you have to tell each of these which switch you want so i have channel 8 is switch d channel 9 and 10 i don't need at this stage but i could assign the variable resistors to them so channel 5 switch a is my arming channel channel 6 switch b is now used to be a two position switch but is now a three position switch is acro angle and manual Channel 7 is a three position switch and that is Acro, Cruise and Loiter and my channel 8, two position is Return to Home. Don't need dual rates in Expo. Uh, it has throttle curves, mixes, only three mixes I found out. It does have pre-mixed Elevon and V-Tail. Now I'll go back to settings. In this auxiliary switch, switches setup page, uh, you actually can, uh, as it comes, everything is turned off. So you can actually turn on all of the switches and the variable resistors, and you can change from six channels, six channels as it comes, to up to ten channels. Uh, why you wouldn't have it coming, uh, why you wouldn't set it as ten, ten channels, I'm not too sure, but you actually have to physically do that before these functions are available to you. The radio is preset with throttle, elevator, rudder and ailerons. You can't change them. You can mix uh, so that you can get separate ailerons and uh, crow braking and things like that. It is a little bit limited. I have done videos on how to set up those things. Uh, but now what we'll do is I'll plug in a battery and we'll see what sort of uh, basic telemetry comes up. And you can see the we get the additional receiver battery level and uh, internal voltage. 4.8 volts which is the receiver battery and we get the signal strength as well. Uh, 
So we'll now go over to the INAV setup and there we are, we are set up Speedy B F405 wing. And if we have a look at outputs and so during that flight it did some auto trimming of the servos which is good. I'm using SBUS so that's plugged into UART2 on the Speedy B and uh, there's my Caddx FPV, Walksnail FPV and GPS on 3. And receiver, set it up as SBUS and that shows you it's all working. Now if you can see the yaw goes from 1000 to almost 2000. Roll 1000 to 2000 and I couldn't have done that and elevator 1000, 2000. Throttle 1000, that's the important thing, you, as long as you have 1000 down the bottom and goes up to 2000. But uh, to get those values I had to go and uh, trim the endpoints in the radio. Uh, it seems to be off by about 20 milliseconds or something like that. These are my modes, these are just my normal modes, exactly the same as any other INAV setup. So that'll about do it for this video. Uh, the Flysky FSI6X 10 channel radio is a surprisingly competent programmable radio, probably the cheapest 10 channel programmable radio on the market. Perfectly good for INAV, maybe a bit limited for the most complex glider setups, but you can do it as you can see in uh, previous reviews that I've done, with the, even with just the six channel. The 10 channel adds adds a lot more to the radio. Uh, well worth getting the X version rather than the just the i6. So there you go, that's the FSI6X from Flysky. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.